So I know it's it, it's awkward. It's weird for everybody. It looks like Clay Thompson is parting ways with the Warriors. It is the end of an era. So the three teams that I've seen out there that have been reported as having interest or that Clay might have interest in are the LA Clippers, the LA Lakers, and the Dallas Mavericks. I actually, I thought about it some more. At first, I felt like the best possible team, I felt like it was a no-brainer where the best spot would be for Clay, Based on situation, um, style, system, I just felt like the Dallas Mavericks would be perfect for Clay. I think when you look at that backcourt of Luka and Kyrie, which brings so much offensive ability and creating and shot making off the dribble, especially um, both high level shot makers. It didn't seem like Dallas ever really committed to a catch and shoot three point player. Like they have, they had different players who could hit shots at times. Right. But I don't, they haven't had a shooter, a, a specialist to the caliber of a Clay Thompson to this point. You always have to improve. You always have to evolve a little bit. Klay Thompson, I feel like, is exactly the right kind of guard that you would want, kind of in between Kyrie and Luka. Like, those Kyrie and Luka are so much on the ball, so much creation and playmaking they have to do for others. Um, To be able to make plays for and have as a spot-up specialist someone like Klay Thompson in between the on-ball activity of Luka and Kyrie, I think that's exactly the kind of player that they should be looking for. That's a player you can rely on. Like, Clay's not somebody you're you're going to for, like, volume shots, but he is somebody that you need to have in rhythm of the offense. So utilizing him properly could be a nice... Um, could be some a nice pressure release off of Kyrie and Luca. Um, really, when you look at it, what took Dallas to the next level in terms of their roster during the season were those trades they made. Derek Jones Jr., PJ Washington, getting those athletes, those long rangy athletes who can defend good athletes on the wing. That took a lot of pressure off of Luka and Kyrie because we know that they're not the strongest defenders. So that just rounded out Dallas roster so nicely. Now, P.J. Washington and Derek Jones also can hit shots. Neither of them are specialists. They're not shooters, but they're guys that can hit shots. And they had other guys that could come in and hit shots. Dante Exum, right? Um, Josh Green. These these were guys that could hit shots. Again, not specialists, not shooters. Klay Thompson would come in as the main go-to specialist three-point shooting option to alleviate off of all the creation paint touches off the dribble stuff that Kyrie and Luca do. I mean, I, I think that would be almost an ideal scenario for Clay, all things considered. Dallas is having success. They're a winning team. They've got other stars. Like, I think that I, I just... It's hard for me to think that that's not the best possible basketball scenario for Clay if he's going to move on. I I do think the Lakers will be and should be a strong option as well. Um, Clay's dad played for the Lakers. Um, I think he has an affinity for LA in general, Um, and and I could see that working. I've I've kind of low key wanted to see Clay be able to play with someone like LeBron who is known for really feeding his shooters and wants that spacing and and wants those options of guys who can space the floor. Um, So playing with a high-level passer and playmaker like LeBron, I think, would be great for Clay basketball-wise. I think that team, the Lakers, um, they've been looking for shooting. They've They've been shuffling between different guards and different wings and different kinds of players. They certainly have been looking for better three-point shooting as of late, so that would check that box. My only question mark with the Lakers right now could actually turn into something that I think could would be a positive for Clay, which is the system, and they just hired a new head coach in J.J. Redick. Now, I'm going to talk on another episode with my more of my take on the J.J. Redick hire for the Lakers. But one thing I'll say here that I think could be a positive for Klay Thompson, what you know, what we know about J.J. Redick from his playing career and and obviously what he values based on the kind of player he was, is shooting. I have to assume that is part of his priority when it comes to his roster and how he wants his team to play. Now, of course, you, 
you have to ad- adapt and adjust to your roster. But we're in the offseason right now. So we'll see what kind of potential tweaks the Lakers might look to make. Um, and I'm not saying they're just going to turn into the Warriors or the Celtics and start shooting a bunch of threes. I just think the kind of stuff that they're running and the kind of players that they're looking to add or change or play more, whatever the case, the kind of lineups they go to, I look to see J.J. Redick incorporate a little bit more of a three-point shooting system and free-flowing culture with the Lakers offense. That's just part of what I expect to see based on who J.J. Redick was as a player. That should, that sounds like something that would be of benefit to Klay Thompson. That sounds like the kind of atmosphere that he would thrive in. So L.A., his dad played there, the Lakers, LeBron's there. Um, I think the Lakers would make a lot of sense, especially if J.J. Redick is looking to kind of pitch to Clay on some, hey, we're about to start running an offense that is way more suited to you. And and that's kind of the last thing I'll say about Clay, which is going to be interesting because he has developed his his identity, his championship identity, um, his high level identity as a player, as a splash brother. And that's not to say that his success is attributed to Steph. It's not to say that he's not going to be a great player without Steph. It's just that we haven't seen that yet. Not only have we not seen it yet, but Clay and Steph, I mean, you got a you you got a nickname, Splash Brothers. Like there's so much significance to that. You weren't just a duo, you weren't just a big two, you weren't just the best shooting backcourt. Like we gave you a nickname. You guys worked together better than maybe any backcourt ever because of your like just where you guys met in terms of your shooting ability. Uh, Steph obviously got into more of his bag in terms of off the dribble three-point shooting. Clay a little more catch and shoot, but both just went completely nuclear when it came to their abilities as shooters. And they've been playing together all this time. Seeing Clay outside of that, separate from that, it is going to be super strange, not just like the different colors and the different jersey, but just you want him to be somewhere where he is still an integral part of that team and that system. And it's going to be interesting to see how much of that he can be separate from the Warriors where the system was literally, you know, manufactured around him and Steph. They became the Splash Brothers together, you know, so, you know, he's not going to form a new Splash duo elsewhere. But, you know, again, when I look at personnel, Luca and Kyrie, you know, Kyrie's a high level shooter, Luca, high level, I would say shot maker as opposed to just like shooter. Luca's just a high level shot maker in general. But these are guys who hit shots. These are guys who enjoy shooting, knocking down shots and being in that kind of environment. Um, just in terms of abilities and shooting, I th- when I think about where would be best for Clay, I just th- I can't help but think Dallas because of that ability. They've got guards that hit shots. They have almost everything else on the roster: bigs, defenders, athleticism. Um, not to say that just plugging in Clay is like okay now now they'll win it all. Now they're a championship team, but that would make them better. Adding Clay to what Dallas has right now would certainly make them better add an element that they didn't have before and maybe it maybe it would get them over the hump. I don't know if Clay does that just by himself, but he certainly makes a team that made it to the finals this year. Even if they got smacked up by Boston, they were in the finals. They made it out the West. It makes that team even better, gives them another weapon to use, and I think that system and culture might be the most ideal for Clay when I look at the teams that he's considering. So let me know what you think. Where do you think Clay Thompson should go and will go and will sign in free agency, assuming that he is parting ways with the Warriors? Let me know your thoughts in the comments.